Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May the 15th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Also, bettingangle.us, a free site for people in the crypto. Dwyer, D W Y E R, 70905. Substack.com. Let's talk about how Alexander Usyk can beat Tyson Fury. Let me just point out that I believe Usyk has a real chance, right? When Usyk was going off at longer odds, I called him the betting side of the play. Now that the odds have leveled out, I still think he's the betting side of the play. And I'm a big Tyson Fury fan. I picked Fury over Vladimir Klitschko. Let's talk about why I think Tyson Fury, who's lost a lot of weight, is going to be very tested. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me also point out too that yesterday I put up a video on how Tyson Fury can win the fight. Here we're pivoting. And we're going to talk about why Usyk can win the fight if certain things go his way. Now I'm somebody, let's sound geeky here, I'm somebody who believes in blueprint fights. You look at a guy, you don't know he has weaknesses, then you see a fight where the guy is exposed. Where there's some part of his game that does not completely translate. I want people to compare Evander Holyfield's fight against Valuev when Valuev was an unbeaten champ. Right? Just look at that fight and compare it to David Hayes' later fight against Valuev. In my opinion, both guys beat Valuev. The Holyfield fight was shocking at the time. The judges did not give Holofield the decision. So, with the blueprint on staying outside, circling Valuev, not engaging him, blessed puncher David Hay literally fights the same fight that Holofield fought. Right? This time, Hay's able to land a haymaker that wobbles Valuev. Right? Hey, different persona than Holofield. Right? Has a certain energy and charisma that came through. Whether or not Hay was doing more in the ring than Holofield did. Understand they gave the title to David Hay. Right? In an earlier generation, a young fighter, Cassius Clay, admitted in an interview that he saw a undersized Eddie Machen against Big Bad Sonny Liston. And Machen's idea on how to fight Liston was to be mobile in the ring. Machen is circling Liston. Machen is throwing a lot of feints. He's not engaging Liston. Ali then realized with Ali's legs, Cassius Clay becomes Muhammad Ali. Right? Ali then realizes that Liston isn't so big and bad if you box him from the outside and use movement. Let's talk about some other blueprint fights. Right? Mayweather Castillo. Castillo comes in. Castillo keeps coming in the pocket on Floyd Mayweather. Castillo's active. He's not waiting. He understands he can't wait. He's backing up Mayweather. Right? The first fight on HBO, I believe it was Harold Letterman who actually had Floyd Mayweather losing that fight. Right? Every fighter has a fight like that. Just understand, later, Marcus Maidana would fight almost the same fight against Floyd. Now, Floyd, of course, figured out a lot between Castillo and Marcus Maidana, 
right? Floyd knew how to be over by the ropes and how to defend himself, right? But just understand, the Castillo fight was a strategy that multiple opponents used, and they did better against Mayweather. Ricky Hatton, for example, before the check left hook. Um, Ricky Hatton did better against Mayweather. Maidana did better against Mayweather than people who actually try to stay outside on Mayweather, fight him in the middle of the ring, right? So, here, I believe you have a blueprint fight on Tyson Fury. I don't believe losing weight is going to help Fury deal with this problem in his game. Fury's a big man. If he were an NBA player, he'd be a power forward or a center, right? He's a big man. He destroys big men because he moves better than them. He can destroy a big man. He has great legs. He can destroy a big man from the outside. We've seen him do that time and time again. They can't catch up with him. He's too mobile. When he gets close to them, both guys are long punchers. Fury, for his size, has superior hand speed. Two, a Vladimir Klitschko. Two, a Deontay Wilder. Right, you notice Fury looks like the better athlete against those guys. But there's a fight out there where he's fighting a guy who is a shorter puncher than him. In other words, these two guys are facing each other. Both guys make the decision to hit the other guy with a shot. And this opponent would throw a hand that got there first. It's not so much that the guy moves his arms faster than Tyson Fury. It's just that the guy threw the shorter punches. Fury has a need for some spacing. Right? He either needs the space to trade with you, or he has to lean on you, has to be all the way inside to smother what you're doing. Now, in my favorites folder, I have two tapes of Fury's alleged win over John McDermott. Folks, that's the fight that tells me Fury's in trouble here. What McDermott is able to do is he's able to keep the fight flowing. McDermott is throwing punches and he's able to get Fury to engage in the middle of the ring at times. He's able to get Fury to trade with him. And what we find out is Fury, who has great coordination for a big man, cannot handle trading with a shorter, more fluid opponent, right? McDermott is big, right? Not as big as Fury, but McDermott is wide. He has weight on him. So he's leaning on Fury. Fury's leaning on him. Then when they back away, McDermott throws shots. And understand, Fury can't match the shots because McDermott is the shorter puncher. Now, one of the secrets to Alexander Usyk is he can shorten his shots. Right? I believe he has, unlike McDermott, faster hands to begin with than Tyson Fury. I believe his shots are going to get there first because they're not only faster handed, but they're shorter. And I believe what Usyk has to do to win this fight is to find a way to actually have a fight. 
In other words, this can't be a clinch fest. Understand, I thought Fury was having problems with Otto Wallen before Fury started leaning on Wallen. First thing that Usyk has to do is to prevent the lean. Right? I don't believe Usyk's going to be running away from Tyson Fury. What I believe he's going to be doing is moving just enough in the pocket. Just enough to avoid getting clinched. Then he needs to not run away from the bigger man. No, he needs to trade with the bigger man. Because what he's going to find out is his punches will get inside of whatever Fury is doing. The McDermott fight is fascinating. Folks, in the middle of the first fight, they actually find David Hay in the crowd, right? The fight's from 2009. They find David Hay in the crowd, and they ask Hay what his scorecard is. Now, it's clear that Fury's in trouble in the middle of the fight. Hay at that point had McDermott up by two rounds. Right, folks? You watch that fight. I know there's some who will have Fury winning that fight. Let's just say the scoring, as in Mayweather-Castillo, the first fight. The scoring could have gone either way. Right? The thing that McDermott did that most Fury opponents did not do is as Fury is backing away from the pocket, Fury has the superior foot speed. McDermott follows him and continues to throw punches. To me, this is a more meaningful fight than, let's say, the Deontay Wilder fights where... While Fury does get knocked down multiple times in multiple fights, you get the feeling that when Fury's not getting knocked down, he's dominating the action. This fight's different. This fight's more troublesome. This fight's a blueprint fight. When the fight is just going forward in the normal course, Fury's having problems. Right, Fury has a problem tying up McDermott because McDermott is prepared to use his head to place his head, I'm not kidding, on Fury's head, right? McDermott will literally lay on your chest, figuratively speaking, in the ring. Then McDermott is throwing shots and he's inside of Tyson Fury. You notice the disadvantage in being 6'9". Right? It's a disadvantage because Fury, when he is throwing shots, right, understand, he can't throw the short punches of a Joe Lewis. That's not his game. Right? So let me point out, we've had some short punchers. Mike Tyson is who I consider to be a short puncher. Look at his fight against Frank Bruno. He gets inside on Frank Bruno. Frank can't do anything with him. Because Tyson is really punching with his body. What short punchers do is they will lean their body. Right? The torque is really all body. It's not arm. And so the punch will travel six inches. Think about a Mike Tyson uppercut. Right? Tyson leans his entire body one way and then moves his hand just a few inches and it's explosive. That's how John McDermott throws punches. Believe it or not, one of the secrets to Usyk, who's not the mover you think, is the fact that he can be a short puncher. Right? I believe he comes in the ring, the first two rounds he's reading you. Right, Understand, this is a camp thing. He trains with Lomachenko's family. Right, Just like Loma comes in early, and they're looking at you to figure out the angles. I think Usyk is figuring out where he can place his body so he can just throw short, quick 
punches. Right? I think the coordination gap here is going to be surprising. I think Usyk wants a fight to develop. He doesn't want low volume. He wants moderate to high volume. Because in a high volume fight, if he can keep Fury throwing shots, he can get the better of the exchange. He's left-handed. That's a problem to begin with. You have to figure out the angles, right? Righties aren't accustomed to fighting lefties, right? He's left-handed. He's fast-handed. In other words, he can throw more punches in a short period of time than you can. But more importantly, he does not need a wind-up to throw shots. Right? This is the guy who can, when he opens up, just lean into you. Right? His straight left is short. Right? You don't see him reach back to throw the punch. Right? This is not Deontay Wilder. Understand his fights against Anthony Joshua. Joshua is a blessed puncher with both hands, right? Deontay Wilder is blessed with a straight right. Understand, Joshua can knock you out with a straight right, with a right hook, with a right cross, with a left hook, with a left cross, right? Understand, everything Joshua throws is hard. But Josh was a longer puncher than Usyk. So when Usyk gets inside, Usyk is able to get off shots faster than Joshua. Joshua is tentative in both fights for a reason. Right? Usyk didn't have to run from Anthony Joshua. Usyk's hanging around the pocket. The secret to Usyk is he wants to hang around the pocket. Right? He has a certain Arthur Perturbia thing going on where he just moves enough to the side in the pocket where the angles are strange for an opponent. And then he's able to riddle you. So let me just say, I think this fight is going to be more involved than most people, right? I think Fury is going to need a strategy to chop down the smaller man. I believe Fury has an easier time against bigger opponents, Vladimir Klitschko, than he does Alexander Usyk. I think Usyk is deceptive. You heard me mention Sonny Liston earlier in this video. Understand Usyk physically is bigger than Sonny Liston, right? After Usyk has fought heavyweights, I still believe Usyk's toughest fights were at cruiserweight because there he doesn't have the advantage that he has in the heavyweight division against guys who need more space to throw punches, right? I think Daniel Dubois is a blessed puncher, right? Like AJ, I think Daniel Dubois throws very heavy punches with both hands. Look at the end of the Kevin Lorena fight, right? Lorena looks like he's been hit by a car. The problem is he doesn't feel comfortable throwing hard short shots. Dubois shots have a little bit of a loop on them. He understood, I believe most of these sluggers by the fourth round against Usyk understand this guy is faster than I thought. If we both throw at the same time, this guy's shots get their 
first. This guy's a straighter puncher than me. Right? So I believe what Usyk needs to do, and it's counterintuitive here, he needs to find fury. He needs to make sure that a fight happens. I believe this is going to be a barn burner. I believe both guys, for different reasons, need to let their hands go. Right? Just understand. Usyk is more ambidextrous than you think. Just understand, his real game is hurting you. Right? I believe to see the real Usyk, look at the Tony Bellew fight. Right? Usyk starts so slow that Bellew actually starts talking to him. Bellew starts urging him to make it more of a fight. Right? Then you notice Usyk decides to do just that. After, of course, he downloads the information. Right after he looks at Tony Bellew for a few rounds and is moving to see how Bellew moves with him. Right? He figures out how to outmaneuver Bellew. Look at the last exchange. Look at where Bellew is. Bellew's up against the ropes. Folks, that's how aggressive Usyk is. Right? Bellew's over by the ropes. Usyk comes in. Look how short the shots are. That's what he needs to do against Tyson Fury. Not run from Fury. Not outpoint him. He needs to try to stop him. Let me point out to another Fury fight I keep mentioning. I consider it a blueprint fight. The reason why the Steve Cunningham fight is so disturbing is as you look at the film, you realize that Cunningham is throwing multiple right hands. Cunningham doesn't get the knockdown off a lucky punch. No, Cunningham comes into the fight thinking, hey, I'm going to throw this right hand. And he's headhunting Tyson Fury. And you notice there is a coordination gap in that fight, right? Cunningham, like Usyk, an athlete, right? Who, like Usyk, outweighed by Tyson Fury. But you notice the athleticism actually gives Cunningham the opportunity to go for the knockout because Fury can't match the hand speed. Right? Fury isn't mobile enough, isn't coordinated enough. He's mobile, but he's not coordinated enough. To get a coordinated superior athlete to leave the pocket unless Fury runs over to you and leans on you. Right? Usyk has to avoid being leaned on. He has to keep the action going because he's the faster-handed fighter. He has the better coordination and he throws the shorter punches. So, counterintuitively, Usyk needs an action fight. Let me just point out that after the ninth round of the second, AJ fight, right? Crowd is energized. People are excited. AJ has landed some shots. So what does Usyk do the next round? He doesn't run and hide. No, he gets back to his advantages over AJ. AJ, of course, bigger man, bigger puncher. Right? But Usyk understands if there's a volley of shots, if they're exchanging shots, Usyk's going to get there first. AJ doesn't feel comfortable throwing a left hook unless he has you badly hurt. 
right? Usyk knows he's fighting a tentative opponent who understands that Usyk's the faster man. So what does Usyk do to silence the crowd? Literally, the very next round, Usyk throws volume. Right? Usyk actually hits AJ a few times. Right? Usyk gets back to his advantages. So understand, the secret to this fight is that Tyson Fury does worse against smaller, more agile, more coordinated opponents. Fury's dream opponent is actually a Deontay Wilder or Vladimir Klitschko, right? Some guy with power who, when he lands, could knock you down. But in the normal flow, Usyk has the coordination advantage. Usyk has the better legs. Usyk has the developed game. Can go lefty, can go righty. At one point in the Vladimir Klitschko fight, he puts both of his hands behind his back. Right? He has Klitschko timed that well. That's the dream opponent for Tyson Fury. The nightmare opponent for Tyson Fury is the Steve Cunningham. It's the John McDermott. I have the full fight and the highlights. You could look at either. The highlights are riveting because you see what I'm talking about. You see that Frank Maloney who knew boxing. Right? Maloney had high profile clients on film afterwards is basically calling the scoring a travesty. The McDermott side of the aisle believes they won the fight. John McDermott now has had the opportunity to think about the fight and to look at the film. He still believes he won that fight. Right, let's just say the Fury side of the ledger was relieved to be awarded the decision in that fight. Right, understand the guys who are willing to trade with the 6'9 guy who either can throw more punches in a short period of time than Fury or who have the shorter punches. In other words, I'm leaning on Fury. I see an opening for a right hand. This happens a lot in the McDermott fight. I get off a right hand. It hits Fury before whatever he's throwing back hits me. I'm not saying Fury's slow. He's not slow. But he's not a short puncher. Right? The person, believe it or not, who's going to be trying to initiate the action in this fight, at least in my mind, believe it or not, is going to be the shorter guy. While Fury's dream opponent is a Wilder or a Klitschko, Understand for Usyk, his dream opponent is a Tyson Fury. It is an Anthony Joshua. It's the big guy who needs more space to throw shots. So the southpaw guy comes in with southpaw angles that already gives an opponent pause. Then, of course, Usyk comes in and he's throwing shorter shots. Right, folks, he's tested by Maris Breedis. At the end of that fight, he takes over the last third of the fight. Breedis looks spent. Right, Breedis is about to fight Jay Opatia. Right, I'm just telling you, I still consider Breedis to be an elite fighter. I, I believe he lost to Obataya the first time because he gave away the first half of the fight, underestimated Opataya, and thought he was going to get a stoppage the second half of the fight. Right? Just understand, Maris Breedis, who is a blessed puncher, could not deal with the firefight that Usyk threw at him the second half of their fight. And this is the guy who I feel did the best against Usyk, of all the Usyk fights I've seen. Right, Derek Chisora, tremendous the first few rounds. Right, but Chisora is spent the second half of that fight. Right, Usyk isn't pushed like he is 
in Lafayette against Maris Breedis. Right, so the problem, what Fury has to do is he has to diminish. I mean, has to diminish Usyk the first half of the fight. Because if we get to the second half of the fight, and if Usyk is 100%, you know, he's not dazed and confused. He doesn't have a closed eye. He can actually see what's coming back, right? If Usyk is close to 100%, right? If he hasn't hit the canvas like he did against Dubois and, you know, claim it's a low blow and it's borderline and stuff, Fury's going to be in trouble. Because then you're going to start seeing the sustained attack. And you're going to realize that Usyk can hit Fury as Fury is reaching back to throw shots. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me point out again. Look at the McDermott fight. Right? McDermott isn't running... McDermott's edge is in the fact that he throws shorter punches than Tyson Fury. Now just imagine if McDermott were left-handed. Just imagine if McDermott has legs to match Fury's legs. Has more hand speed. Understand, McDermott as he was arguably wins that first fight against Tyson Fury. Let me also close by saying this, and I have to recognize greatness when it's there. Just like Mayweather in the rematch against Castillo came in a different man. Right? You know, corrected the problems and beat up Castillo in the rematch. Understand Tyson Fury came in the rematch against McDermott ready. Right? But I will say this, and it has to be said. People need to understand that Mayweather, at the end of the day, was a freak athlete. Right? You, you look at Mayweather, whether the opponent is throwing more punches or not than Mayweather, you understood Mayweather matched that opponent in hand speed. Right? The worst I have ever seen. Juan Manuel Marquez, Hall of Famer. Look was in his fight against Floyd Mayweather. Right? Mayweather makes him look painfully slow. Right? The Mayweather who fights him isn't even prime Mayweather. But you understood Mayweather had physical gifts. The reflexes were cat quick. The problem with Tyson Fury, by contrast, is compared to a Steve Cunningham, Compared to an Usyk, he's not the athlete those guys are. In other words, you know, he's going to have to somehow offset a hand speed and a short punching differential. Right? It's possible. It's possible. But just understand, it's different than Mayweather who, you know, understood it's all strategy because Mayweather had the physical capability to match anybody's hand speed, right? Look at Mayweather against Oscar De La Hoya, right? You, you see Mayweather in that fight and Mayweather looks like he's just a superior athlete, right? Just understand it's going to be hard for Fury whatever the weight loss, to suddenly become a short puncher. That's not really who he is. Right? So let me make a prediction here. If Fury backs away from the pocket, my prediction is that if he does so after the first two rounds, right? First two rounds, Usyk's probably going to look at him, right? I mean, you know, Usyk's slow starter. If it's the third or fourth round, if the bigger man backs away from the pocket, Usyk's going to follow him. 
The big secret here is it's Usyk who wants a fight to break out. Those are my thoughts. Left hook to the body. That's what Tyson Fury needs to focus on, right? Um, the left hook would allow him to use his right hand for defense against Usyk's straight left. That right hand is going to have to be around his face for part of the fight, right? To block what Usyk's throwing back, right? If he comes forward and tries to clinch Usyk, he's going to have the problems that he had against John McDermott. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.